You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to our fifth and final part of our West of Scotland Premier Division season preview. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. Joined by the Ockham Lake striker Mark Shanklin. Shankers, how are we? Hi, I'm good, Scott. I'm just I'm sitting here five days in a trot in the same t-shirt. <laughs> starting, to, starting to smell now. <laughs> Lachlan's wearing the same hoodie as well. Lachlan, how are you? Aye, I'm alright. It's, uh, it's getting quite comfy now. So, <laughs> get off at one point. Brilliant. We are nearly done. We've got four more teams to get through and then we'll be making some final predictions in this episode. We are going to look at Cowan and Rangers, Rossville, Coburnley and Bonneton. Shankers, who out of these, those teams could be up there this season? I think the obvious one that stands out is Cowan. Uh, the, season, the last season that was finished that, that was declared on the average points. I mean, we got awarded the title and we still had quite a few games in hand and the winning probably felt hard done by that the the title was given in that way because they were sitting top of the league. They had the points on the board, and, and it, in my opinion, it probably wasn't the right to settle the league that way. So that they rightly should feel hard done by. But they, they're always been there or thereabouts at in junior uh, at the junior levels, and and I mean I'm I'm going to make a statement here and say that Thomas Collins is probably one of the signings of the season for. Uh, Fickle winning, he's, he's been up at East Fife and Stenhouse Muir and he maybe hasn't played as much as he, he wanted. He was at Beath before uh, he made the step up and, and for them to attract him uh, back down to, to co-winning is, is for me a, a great signing and he'll have a big say in where they finish this season, that's for sure. Lachlan, who out of those teams stand out to you? Aye, Shanker says it's got to be got to be the Buffs. They're, uh, they're an ambitious team. You know, they they want to be at the, at the sharp end of the league. And uh, I, I think they'll, they'll be one to watch. Definitely. We are going to start this preview by taking a look at Cowan and Rangers. Cowan are a team we are at history. Lachlan, a lot of young players in the team this season. Do we think Chris Strange recruited well and can I bring in youth in as well? Yeah, I think he's got a, a good balance uh, on paper. Um, my, my colleague Eric, he, he writes for the Urban Herald. He, he covers the buffs a lot. And speaking to him, you know, he... He reckons they are they're kind of young and ambitious. They've got a good balance, you know. They've got like your Carlo Montes and stuff like that as well, you know. They've got, and then David Syme played with Kelly. He he was in about it when when Kelly were were in the premier the premiership as well. So they've got a good kind of a good mix, and I think that mixed with their ambition to to climb up the leagues and get their license, become a kind of team higher up. I think that will that will stand them in good stead. Shankers, what's your thoughts on Cole Wannan? As, as you touched on, they, they've got a lot of young players, but as Lachlan says, they've got a good mix with the likes of Carlo Monte, Ben Lewis, uh, Ricky Hanvey, Tommy Maitland, players like that who have been, been experienced in, in the divisions for, for years, and then they've, they've got young players coming in. I mean, Thomas Collins is a young player, but he's still experienced at playing at, playing at this level, and and it is a good mix, and I think when you've got that mix of experience and youth players that can only blend well together and, and stand them as good instead, as, as Lachlan says, and, and Cowan will be disappointed if they're not up there at the top end of the table uh, this season, and it'll be interesting to see how the season pans out for them. I think yeah. it, he's such a, a great manager as well. You know, he knows how to, to kind of get his players up for it. He likes to kind of express it in the... Uh, a different way to the other <laughs> way. that's probably the nicest way to put it. But I think he'll be he'll be you know, if they're not doing well at the beginning, he'll be he'll be letting them know for sure. Definitely. I spoke to defender David Syme about the upcoming hopes for the buffs this season. So we're joined by Cowan and Rangers David Syme. David, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the show. Thanks for coming on. Aye, that's no problem, no hash at all. Uh, no worries, how are you? Aye, no bad, no bad. Enjoying the weather. Brilliant. How excited are you for the season to start? Aye, excited, really excited. Uh, we've had a no bad pre-season, a poor last game, but other than that, we've had a real good start, so we need to 
get our finger out for Saturday against Urban Meadow and then carry on to the league. Brilliant. How excited are you to fans back in the stadium? Uh, I'm delighted. Uh, Conan's got kind of a regular group of maybe two or three hundred folk. So it'll be good to see some, some familiar faces, sorry, back Brilliant. into the ground. Brilliant. How have you been finding pre-season? Uh, tough, tough, but we've been in quite a while. We've been in probably, got to say, maybe a month and a half, two months, so it's been long, but it's been good. Definitely. What's management been like with you? Has Chris Rain been, yeah, been putting you through your paces? Oh, Chris is always putting us through paces <laughs> every year. Uh, he's, he's, he's on to me, probably the most, but that's because we he, he demands a lot for me, so. Hopefully we can challenge it at the top of the league this year and maybe receive a few medals at the end. But I won't. What changes have been made to the squad for this season? Quite a bit. Quite a fair bit. Uh, boys from kind of Lowland League and League 2 and stuff like that. So I think we're trying to improve our squad. Maybe not as depth-wise, but we've definitely got a 1-18 that can certainly participate in our team. Who's going to be some of the key players this season? Uh, I think there's numerous back four we've got a good solid foundation so from then on we kick on we've got a wee exciting player that came for Blantyre Vicks uh, Gavin Miller was at East School Brown stuff like that so he's really caught my eye in pre-season but obviously you've got your likes of Callum Montes and, and Ali McComb you have to watch out as well the boy from Sonar so he's looking well he's looking physical he's looking big so ah, exciting oh young oh young talented boy so the only way is up for them Brilliant. What about, what about the first few fixtures? How are you thinking about them? Listen, you could say they're easy, they could say they're hard. It doesn't matter in junior football. MD can beat MD. If you're no, if we're not performing at our best, you know, somebody could take points off us. Definitely. Final question, what's the hopes and expectations for this season? How do you see the boss getting on? Uh, hopes? Well, it's not really hopes. We need, we've need. we set targets we need to win. We need to win every game that we take part in. We take it game by game. Target says, let's see where we are at the end of the season. Brilliant. Is there much, is there kind of much kind of thoughts going into like the cup, the cup and things like that? Are you just focused uh, on the no, cup? No, not really. There's We're only in one cup, which is the Challenge Cup. Uh, we've not participated in the juniors or the seniors yet. And I think obviously there's a lot of work happening at the Buffs at the moment. The hospitality is going to look absolutely fantastic. And obviously the ground's starting to take shape the now with all the stands and CT stands going up. So the, and the buffs in two or three years' time is going to look absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on, David. Best of luck for the season Super. ahead. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, mate. We'll move into Rossville. Shankers are a team who have kind of been up and down. What do we think of them for the upcoming season? I mean, it's a difficult one. Uh, I know when we were speaking about Clyde Bank and I was saying that that Gordon Moffat has has dipped in his his old team and and I'm not saying took a few players but he's managed to attract them for for Rossville to Clyde Bank which Clyde Bank is obviously a a more attractive club so uh, it, it's no no shame that he's went and done that but it just shows you that the players that that they are producing at Rossville and I think it's hard for teams like that because when they are producing quality players there's always going to be a bigger club there ready to take them at the end of the contract or, or buy them out of the contract. So I think it is difficult for them. But, but Gorms, David Gormley, he's done a great job since since he's went there um, to Rossville. I mean, we've we've played up there twice. They play at Ben Bird's ground. We played them once in the league and once in the Scottish Cup. And and Scottish Cup, we were down 1-0, had to fight back in 1-2-1 in the league. Uh, it was actually a funny one because Neil McPherson scored his first ever goal for, for us to win the game. And that just almost summed up the luck that day that that a player who hadn't even scored a goal for us, and that was who managed to, to break them down and, and we beat them up there as well. And it was it was two tough games that we've had up there. But I think this season, after losing a few key players, uh, I think it's Danny Liam or Danny McGonagall. I'm not sure what he's... I know he's, uh, he's either Liam... Or he's Danny and his dad's the other one. I'm not actually sure, but uh, losing him and Fraser Johnson in the middle, and then I think they lost their goalie. Uh, I'm not actually too sure in his name, but I know he's went to Clyde Bank as well. So three key players that, that uh, they've lost, and I think that could could make them struggle this year unless they've recruit, recruited uh, the same level of quality. But they'll find it difficult. I think. Lachlan, would you go along with that in Rossville this season? 
I is so I don't know if you knew. I've got a weekend exclusive. There's actually up to eight teams getting relegated. <laughs> 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 but I think, <laughs> unfortunately for Rossville, I think they'll be in about that. You know, they they the you've named gonna... twelve teams though. <laughs> it's gonna get done. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's no good at math. Was. <laughs> uh, I think Talbot's going to be in for that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think Rossville, you know, as Shanker's touched on, they've lost a lot of key players. So, you know, if they're not recruiting right and replacing these these guys, similar to Harrowford, if you know, if you're not replacing these players with, with like for like bodies, then it's hard to re- recover for that. So, I think again they'll be looking behind them rather than in front of them. So it'd be a great achievement if they were to stay up. I spoke to their captain Ross Urquhart about their expectations for the upcoming season. So we're joined by the Rossville captain, Ross Circuit. Ross, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Thanks very much for coming on. No, cheers, mate. How are we? Yeah, not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, all good, mate. How excited are you for the season to kick off? I am buzzing. I mean, it's been a while since we've had competitive football, so just looking forward to it. Definitely. How excited are you to have fans back in the stadium? Uh, it, makes, it makes a big difference. It kind of adds a wee bit of atmosphere and a wee bit of dig as well, so look forward to it. Brilliant. Are you, how's pre-season been and how are you feeling going into the new season? I I mean, I feel like pre-seasons are always hard to judge, but it's been enjoyable to an extent. Um, we've obviously had a fair bit of an overhaul, so it's just kind of getting the squad to mesh well, but it's been going good, I would have said. Brilliant. Obviously, Goms is a, a friend of the show. What's his kind of thoughts been going into the season? I, I mean... You know him, I'm sure he's just pretty straight edge and just says it as it is. So he's been for the most part, he's definitely been positive. Um, but he's also been hard on us when he needs to be. So I think a lot of the boys are just you kind of want to just match his expectations. So it's it's a good target. Definitely. How are you feeling about getting back into it you, after a, a long layoff? Are you buzzing just to get back onto the park? I I think I think I can speak for most of the boys like. You just want competitive football. Last last year was good getting to play, obviously. You're lucky getting to play, but having the actual a goal, a target, stuff like that, it, it makes it more enjoyable. Yeah, definitely. What about squad overhaul? Is it just meant to dare about the squad being overhauled? What changes have been made to the squad for last season? Uh, so, I mean, you can, we managed to keep the core from last season, which was massive. Like, we got a really good group of boys, and then this year we've just kind of added to it. It's, as everyone knows, we're not exactly blessed with the funds of some of the other teams in this league, but you bring in young, hungry boys that have a point to prove, you, you're on the, you're on the right way already. So Definitely. Who's the kind of players it is that have come in that are gonna, you feel going to make a difference? I mean, there's a good few. I think bringing in Big Mick Dunlop as a captain, who's obviously, I mean, he's not on the young side, but he's a, he can, you can see right away why he's played it where he has played. He's... At least by example, and he's a big presence at the back, so he'll hopefully be pretty important for us this year. And then we've managed to keep a hold of the boys, some of the boys like Mikey, Mikey McWilliams, James Finley, stuff like that. Boys, the boys will do the hard work, but as soon as they get on the ball, that's that's the kind of players you want on it to go and make a difference. Yeah, definitely. What do you feel about your first few fixtures? How do they look? Um, I'm sure first game's coming old. Um, so I think both. I mean, look, I folk are going to be looking at teams like Cardiff, oh, Rossville, and Cumberland, thinking they'll be down near the bottom. But we enjoy that. It's less pressure on us. It makes other folk look stupid when we go out and perform. But so first game, I mean, I feel like it's pretty level, level playing field. No one expects much for either team. So just go out and prove your point and kind of put your stamp in the game. Brilliant. Final question: Was how do you see the season going? What are the hopes and expectations for Rossville this season? Um, obviously, first and foremost, we have to avoid relegation. But I think I think we've got a hungry group of boys that want to do more than that. Can kind I of want to prove that they can more than hold their own in this league? Um, especially with some of the big teams we're looking to upset a few teams. So hopefully we can. Brilliant. Best of luck for the season, Ross. It's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. No, no problem. Thanks very much. Thanks, mate. We'll move into Coburnley. Shankers, a team who it's is a, it's never an easy place to go, is it? No, it's certainly not. And one of the boys was saying we've got them in a, a midweek fixture, I think, at the start of the season. We always seem to play them 
midweek down there and it, and it does make for a for a tough game. Uh, when you get them on a Saturday, they've, they've maybe a slight section of the support who who like a wee, a wee afternoon dram in it. Uh, go, go burn there and they'll, they'll let you know that you're in for a game and it's always stuffy and it's always tough down there. And, and if you win, you're winning with odd goal. You're never winning comfortably. We just lost one of our players, Corey Pearson, to, to go burn there as well. Uh, it'll be a good addition for them. And uh, as I said, Coburnley will be one of the stuffy teams who who get points at places that that are maybe maybe you wouldn't think they would get points at, and they'll pick wins up here and there. And the team that's been in the, the division for a long time, and and I still think they'll be there uh, from the end of the season. Lachlan, what's your thoughts on Coburnley? I, I I can imagine as a player, it is a really kind of tough place to play. I'd imagine Shankers would agree with that. It's just a it's one of the ground is just kind of quite tight as well, the way it's set up. And I'd imagine it's, it's just not very nice to kind of go there. I think in Martin Ferry, the, the, the gaffer, he's, I said it before, like he, he's a good kind of guy. He's a good football man. He knows how to, to grind out results. But I think I think Burnley will maybe be one of these teams that suffer for, for so many teams going down. I get know that I've mentioned it, but... I think that is what's that, 15 teams I've got. You've <laughs> we'll only got five teams staying up. <laughs> no, I think I think they'll probably do just enough to stay up, maybe kind of 10th or 11th, but they, they might kind of be in danger for a, a, you know, a few weeks until they, they call themselves out. That's the thing. If you're sitting 10th or 11th, uh, even 9th at one point, as we said, <laughs> two or three games, I mean, that is the danger, a dangerous area to be in the league. I mean... Nobody's going to be safe uh, running about the areas, that's for sure, which is unfortunate, but it's just one of the things this season, isn't it? I was just going to say, it's one of the ones, you know, you, you could be as close to the, the top as the... Aye, as you are the bottom, I know. It's just... Definitely. I spoke to the manager, Martin Ferry, about Coburnley's hopes and expectations for the upcoming season. So, joined by Martin Ferry, the Coburnley manager. Martin, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thanks very much, Scott. How are we? Pleasure. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It's nice and sunny, so we're good. Brilliant. How excited are you for the season to start up? Uh, let's say it's been a, a bit of a long wait. Uh, yeah. It's been a bit of a long wait, so uh, I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to the start. How hard has it been with the, how hard has it been with the layoff? Like has it been tough to get motivated for oh, having to come back off again? I think I think we, like most of the other guys, probably like myself, you've got if you've got a genuine passion for even this level of football or any level of football, it's uh, it's been probably one of the toughest toughest periods of my life in the context of uh, football itself. But uh, I'm glad to see we're hopefully round the corner now and on the home straight, let's say. Brilliant. How excited are you to welcome the fans back in? Well, I think that's a that's a, a massive uh, Coburnley, that's a uh, Massive for them to be back. That was one of the, the one of the, the whole reasons why we never we, we uh, just took a year a year and a bit out yeah. at the start. It was at the, it was at the fans' request. It wasn't at my request or the the management team or the <clears throat> the management committee down there. They asked the fans, "What do you think?" And they categorically categorically said they would they would love us not to start without them. And uh, I think I'd only been in the job. It wasn't that long, you know. So uh, for me, but. For me, I can totally, totally appreciate that, and I'm just, a, as I say, I'm just the manager of their football team, not the manager of the club. So uh, it was a uh, probably, probably in the, in, in the end, it kind of maybe, maybe it was just one of those things. But I think it was the right for me personally and for the club. I think it was the right decision to take. But that's not to say that anybody else that went ahead. Then that's that was that was their totally their decision to do that. So you've got to you've got to appreciate that as well. Brilliant. What's pre-season been like? Has it been hard to get the, the team back into order? It's uh, from the, the, the lockdown itself, Scott. It's been a, I mean, if you if you if you do any fitness at all, you'll know that structure stuff is is is, is good. And you know the, the kind of Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you know, inbuilt into you, and then all of a sudden you're relying on people sending you out, you know, videos and you know training schedules and stuff to do and posting it back, you know. And I, I feel as a as a football community as well, when you get together just on that Monday, Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday, everybody's in it together. So you're there as a group, you know, whereas yeah. it's, it, I think it's more difficult to motivate individuals than, than, than groups, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's been, uh, it's been pretty, 
pretty, pretty tough, to be honest. But I've even been posting a few things myself throughout the lockdown with the mad gaffer being, you know what I mean, 5Ks and then, <laughs> then, then Joe Wicks, he's fed up with me and stuff like that. But, uh, and posting them and I, I've even asked him to do a few and they're like, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's too hard. You know what I mean? But it's just it's just been doing like other other people, other clubs have been doing charity stuff and all the rest, you know. So it's been really, it's been brilliant to see from everybody to be honest, the, the whole community that's uh, footballing communities, certainly in the West and the old the old what it was classed as the old juniors, you know, doing yeah. every day they a bit through the social media has probably kept it alive, to be honest. I wouldn't have imagined what to happen if this would maybe twenty years ago this happened. I don't think there would be any football left mm-hmm. at this yeah. level, you know. But, Definitely. What changes have you made to the squad for this season? Uh, well, originally, uh, originally when I started, I think I had, uh, I think I had four, four from from, uh, from from when I started, and then I added, I've added about, I think about uh, twelve to that. So probably got up to about sixteen, seventeen. I've got a couple of a couple of boys that are in just uh, and try and make their mark to see if they can we can we can win a deal. So uh, probably up to about seventeen or eighteen. But obviously with the the program that's ahead, it's going to be pretty grueling. Yeah, and even with season friendlies, we've noticed as well. We had to we had to cancel a game against the Barton a couple of weeks ago because we had a few a few missing a few ends of the etc. You know, which in the normal normal scheme of things, you would have been able to get over that hurdle pretty easily. But uh, it just seems that it's just another knock on effect of what we've what we've all just went through. Yeah, definitely. Final question: What's your hopes and expectations for the upcoming season? How do you fancy oh. go Burnley? Uh, hope to stay in this this league for starters. I think it's going to be absolutely tough, you know, with the with the, with the amount of teams that are, are going to going to get relegated now initially from the from the, the, the twenty. So I think it's I don't I don't get it. I, I as I'll just say it is what it is. So I'll just deal with that. But I hope to just uh, this is I'm rebuilding a new team here. So uh, I hope to just uh, keep keep them in the league is what all I've, all I've been trusted to do, and that's what I'm going to try my best to do. Uh, depending on what obviously what happens throughout the, the course of the season. But I let's hope it goes uh, from start to finish. Definitely. Thank you very much for coming on, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure and best of luck for the season ahead. Well, thanks very much indeed. Our final club we're going to take a look at is Bonnet and Thistle. Lachlan, you write for Bon right about Bonnet and what's your thoughts on our upcoming season? Uh, it's good to see Bonnet and about the uh, this league, it's going to be certainly different for them. They've been used to be in the, the South of Scotland League, which, no disrespect to the league, you know, some of these teams are playing in front of two guys in a dug, you know. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a totally different ball game for them. You know, they they, they can attend to compete for that title, um, but Stranraer reserves, for whatever reason, seem to kind of run away with it every year. But that kind of shows what that league's like. Um, but I think it's it's going to be different for them. It'll be good to see them how they they fare against you know your Oak and Lex and and Darvels. It's going to be I think that they actually they play Darvel away first game of the season, so it'll be it'll be interesting. But you know they've got a good management team. Alan Robertson, he's Kelly's record appearance holder. He's a he's a legend in the town, so he certainly certainly knows what's going on. And and then they've got Paul Wright, who he doesn't need any introduction in Kilmarnock, obviously being the the Scottish Cup hero of '97, so you know that they're no, they're no a bad team, but I think with this step up they might struggle just because of the way, the way you know with how they've been used to. But in the the South of Scotland league, they're, they're maybe no as competitive, whereas you know that they're going to have tough ties. But the thing is, they'll not be travelling as much as they're used to, which which might kind of suit them. You know the. They'll have games in Harrowford and Darvel rather than going to Dumfries and Loch Maben and you know places like that. So I think they'll do. I don't know. I, I don't think they'll they'll stay up, but I think they they might give themselves a good account. They've got Chris Kerr. He's a good striker who knows where the goal is, and maybe he can teach Shankers a, a thing or two. But <laughs> uh, I no, I think <laughs> that was a bit delayed. There. <laughs> uh, I think. They're going to struggle, I think, but it'll be a good test for them to see how they go, and then they can kind of reevaluate. You know, if if they do go down, they might kind of be one of the 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 more competitive teams in the league below. Definitely. I don't think Lawson's going to get a job writing for the South of Scotland League anytime soon. <laughs> aye, aye, right. Now. What's your thoughts on Bonnet and Shankers? Um, 
the, the thing is, Lachlan's covered probably the majority of what, what you need to cover. I don't really, it's a team I don't really know a lot about, obviously, because they're new to the division. That could work in their favour because nobody really knows much about them, but it could work against them because then they've not got any experience playing it, playing at this level and playing against some of the teams because some of the teams at this level are, are top teams and, and could even compete above this level. So it is going to be tough for them. And I know Dylan that, that you spoke to. I know Dylan who who he was at Auckland Lake. He's been at Prune and teams like that. So it does show they kind of trapped uh, a quality player to them, but. As Lachlan says, I, I think they'll find it tough, and and maybe maybe going going down. What I know, it's obviously no nice, but I think maybe if they want to go down, regroup, and, and then maybe come back stronger if they've done that. But uh, it's good to see teams like this, new teams in the league, and and it'll be a good experience for them anyway. And they'll be looking to cause a few updates along the road. Definitely. That was us looking at all 20 teams. I'm going to speak to Dylan Stevenson at Bonton on their hopes and expectations for the upcoming season. So we're joined by Bonton's Dylan Stevenson. Dylan, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having us. No worries. How are you? Good, you? Yeah. Aye, all good, mate. Are you buzzing for the season to kick off? Aye, mate. It's been a long way, isn't it? It's Definitely. been a well, well long season. Definitely. What's, uh, how excited are you to... To get back up and running, has there been much? Can I prep? What's the preparation been like for pre season? Well, we were doing a bit of running in that, but we've just started getting a few pre season friendlies. We've got I think it's one or two left, and then the first game against Darvo. Brilliant. What's the uh, who's been kind of welcome back into the squad? What's the squad changes been like? Well, to be quite honest, we've just kept most of the same squad a few, but must uh, there's been a few young boys come up for the under 21s, which has been a good kind of mix for the, the boys. It's been a good group of boys. Definitely. Who's, who's the sort of new kind of faces that have been coming in? Uh, well, who was it? I think there's a young boy, Taylor, for the 20s that has come in. We've not really actually had anybody come for like who wasn't there last year. has been like no big signings, if you know what I mean, but mm-hmm. that's just due to hardly anybody moving around about, if you know what I mean. Definitely. What's management been like with you? How are they preparing for the new season? Well, it's just run, run, run into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as it is every year, but just a wee bit longer this year. Definitely. How, how excited are you to fans back in the stadium? Oh, it's a big king, you know what I mean? See, when we were playing last year, just at the end, it was kind of, there are no fake games, but it's not the same. It's not the kind of same atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. What's, what's the hopes and expectations for this season? How do you see the season going? Is it just about staying up? No, no, I don't think so. A lot of folk are kind of be looking at it as if Bonnet and are just like that, but I played with other teams before and I don't really see a big difference, you know what I mean? They're competitive and the games we played last year, I mean, the last game we played before we finished last year, we beat Harrowford away from him. Mm-hmm. So it's a good marker for the boys. I feel as if we will to find our feet at the start, but we were certainly right in about it, right for the word go. Definitely. So with well, yourself, how do, you, how do you feel going into the new season? Like, Do you, do you feel ready to go? Aye, we're good. The training's been intense. I mean, it's been twice a week, but we've been right in about it. And the games that we've played so far, they've all been competitive. It's not as if there's been like any easy games. We're away to green up there at the weekend. Hard game, I mean, hard team. We managed to get the win, so it's everything's looking good on our side. Brilliant. What's the factors like? How do you how do you see the first few games going? Oh, the first few games are kind of big, big, isn't it? I think it's Darvo and then Pollock and then I think somebody, I think Oaken Lex in the first five. So it's a good, we'll find out straight away what it's all about, you know what I mean? Definitely. Thanks very much for coming on, Dylan. Best of luck for the new season ahead. No worries, pal. Thanks very much, right? Cheers. And that is our 20 teams looked at. Shankers, Lachlan, are you glad we've reached the end? Ah, uh, it's been a long five days. Uh, <laughs> I've, just, I've just got it the... Uh, 18 teams are going to get relegated this <laughs> <laughs> I think even Darvo and Talbot are at risk <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good season to look forward to anyway that's for sure yeah definitely we're going to do a few wee predictions here before we, we finish up I'm going to ask Shankers and Lachlan to give me the team that's going to win the league I think I know Shankers on you go Shankers who's going to win the league I think I would I would find my P45 through my letter box if if Tucker heard me saying that any other team apart from ourselves was was going to win the league, uh, I'm going to back ourselves. Always, always do. Uh, we we are we're no we're confident in our own abilities to to be up there challenging, but we're under no illusion how difficult it's going to be. And we know there is teams that, that are fighting and and going to be wanting to be up there themselves, and it's going to be up to us to stop that. And I I, can't, I just can't wait to get football back and. And get supporters. That's one thing. There's no really mentioned a lot on here. We're going to get supporters in for the first game of the season. 
and it's only going to increase and increase and increase. Fingers crossed that that we're going to see, like so we mentioned earlier on, Paul Octal, about a thousand people at the game and things like that. And, and hopefully that's that's the last day. If last season, you don't want to be talking about last season where where they were getting weeks decided on points per game and stuff like that. You want you want seasons getting finished and, and you want big crowds and you want you just want local football back and and I think I speak for everybody involved in it that, that I just so glad that we're able to do it and, and people at Lachlan are there to report on it and, and give the, the level it's a kind of platform and give everybody a, a kind of platform to go and show and express ourselves. So I'm really looking forward to the, the season ahead and hopefully in 10 months time we're sitting here and, and I'm saying that the Auckland Lake are, are champions, fingers crossed. Lachlan, who are you going for? Listen, Auckland Lake have been a team that has been there, done it. You know, every every year they're they're going to be up there for sure. But I just can't see past Darville with the with the squad they've pulled together. Shankers will no like it, but I think it's going to go all the way to the wire. I think it. Is. And if the if the league chiefs have got any sense when this second half of the the fixtures came out, if it's Darville Till, but I don't know. Do you play them at Beechwood first, or is it? I'm actually not too sure. I've not really looked. Looked at the fixtures in depth. Whatever, whatever way around, I think if that was maybe the second gate, last game or the last game of the season, it could be it could be absolutely massive, and the, the crowd at that could be incredible if it is a case of you know winner winner takes all. But I think I think Darvel are gonna just have enough to do it. Brilliant team to watch. I know you've picked a lot of teams to get down, Lachlan. Who do you think could be a team that might exceed the expectations this season? I don't know if I get any teams staying up. <laughs> you get any left? <laughs> uh, it's a tough one. Let, let me have a wee kind of look at the... I don't know. I think I think Irvin Meadow are going to do well, better than the people maybe give them credit for. I can see them kind of being up there. They would be my team to... And, and possibly come up, you know, again, they may be expecting to be middle of the road, but they might might finish a bit higher. I think it's, it's hard. It's going to be a very... Tough league, so I I would I would go for the two if I was to if you were putting a aye. Shankers. Team to watch. I mean, I think there's there's a few. I mean, uh, uh, it's hard with team to watch. You don't want to say it as if it's a team that that shouldn't be doing well. But I think like, like it's obviously Clyde Bank who had done well uh, before the season came to halt last year. It was Lachlan say Darren Meadow who have got. New management team uh, going for a, a full season. They've attracted some some good players and they've got a good squad together. And uh, so so Meadow and and Clyde Bank are probably ones to watch for me. And I'm in, I'm interested to see how Ben Afton do. I, I know a couple of the, the young boys that have have went up and, and signed there. So I'm hoping personally they do well. Uh, so I think. Meadow, uh, Clyde Bank, I think, will be ones that will be up there and, and challenging it. And I think Ben Afton will, will do better than a lot of people think for, for uh, a kind of refurbished uh, side. Definitely. And that is us. That is our five episodes done. I want to thank every all, all the representatives of all 20 teams who took part in this preview. Uh, the clubs as well for getting us the the kind of con- the allowing us to talk to the, the representatives of the teams. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this. Shankers Lachlan, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, and thanks. we will we will be updating everyone on our coverage that's got planned what well, we've got planned for SM Media. Thank you very much everyone. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon and enjoy the new season. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>